What's going on reef builders? I'm Jake Adams. Thanks for joining me for another video. In this installment, I'm going to share with you my Acanthastria garden. So you'll see in this tank, there are a lot of mostly LPS corals and uh, a lot of them are really orange. I am a total sucker for true Acans. Acan echinata, Acan subechinata, Acan rotundiflora, and especially the large polyped Acan pachycepta. So you might be confused. I know the aquarium hobby calls lords Acans, but they haven't been part of that group for a really long time. So this is an actual Acan garden. I have to admit, when I first set it up, it took me a while to fall in love with it because the corals hadn't really settled in that much and I hadn't filled it in with uh, more of the corals that I wanted to have in this tank. But I think now, Now's a pretty good time to, uh, to show it off. Like I said, it's mostly LPS corals. Um, nominally, this is a 40 gallon aquarium, but it only holds 30 gallons of water, not counting the displacement from the live rock. But if you take the internal dimensions, um, this 24 inch tank, it's not quite a cube. I think it's like 18 inches uh, wide, 24 inches across and about 20 inches tall. Um, it's been a really fun tank, but it's part of a larger system. So it's, you know, it's, it's part of 600 gallons of water. Um, it's got three different protein skimmers on it. So I can't really show you too much how this tank is run, um, but I do want to spend some time telling you about the corals, telling you about the fish, and telling you about the very fun light on this aquarium. It's the Max Spect Jump LED Blue version, and they are the ones actually sponsoring this video because there's a couple fun tricks with that light, and we'll talk about it as soon as I give you a nice little uh, rundown of the corals and fish in this aquarium. One thing I tend to do when I'm talking about reef tanks or showing off my tanks or someone else's tanks is a lot of times, man, I will really like skim over the fish. So before I get into the corals, I wanna talk about the fish. You probably can't see them in the clip right now, but we're gonna insert a plenty of B-roll so you can get a good look at the fish that are in this tank. So there's a lot of cool, smaller, nano-sized fish in this aquarium. Um, there's a pair of firefish. I, I'm pretty sure it's a pair. I've actually had a lot of experience putting six firefish together and ending up with two and one of them gets kind of that full belly like it looks like it's gravid. Um, so we've got two firefish that have been here for a couple years. Um, there's one yellow tang that is uh, arguably a little bit large for this aquarium but he started out smaller so I'm probably going to swap him out soon for one of the small-ish uh, captive bred ones I have from Biota. So we got the two firefish, we got the yellow tang. Now a few fish that are really hard to catch sight of, there's a very small Eviota goby. That was a captive bred fish from uh, Biota as well. Um, he really likes to hang in the corners, so it's hard to get a good shot at him, but he'll just like dart out real quick and grab some food whenever we put it in there. There's a Plextranthius in there, also known as a geometric pygmy hawkfish. Um, I've had that fish, that's probably one of the few holdovers from my tank at home before I set up the studio. And I got that one from someone else. So I have no idea how old that Plectranthius actually is. But he's a total stud, a full on, just like one and seven eighths inches, just not quite two inches long. Really cool, personable fish. Um, but the real treasure in this tank is my pair of candy and Swiss guard basslet. So I have one Leopropoma carmambi and one Leopropoma uh, rubre. <laughs> so we got a candy basslet and a Swiss guard basslet and they're really, really cool. I think they're a little shy right now because we have extra lights, you know, around showing off the tank of, you know, myself and everything that you see in the frame right now. Um, but they're actually pretty bold. And there's definitely one, the type of red that's on this light really makes that candy basslet shine. So um, before I get into the corals, I will confess in advance before you go at me in the comments that this tank has been like holding off a you know little aptasia bloom for about two years and i think we finally lost the one or two peppermints that were in here keeping everything in check so you'll see a couple patches of uh, ugly brown tentacles so don't at me about those i'm going to take care of them real quickly um, might even put a copper bane in here for a few days because they'll do some serious work then put the peppermint in, uh, shrimp in there uh, to keep them back so um, we are going to Switch it up a little bit and I'm gonna show off some of my actual acanthastrias in this almost nano reef tank. 
So overall, this tank doesn't have that much movement. There is a really nice pink alveopora here um, that hasn't quite opened up that as much as it used to um, over the last few weeks. But this tank is really typified by these uh, fleshy LPS corals. Um, sometimes they get a little bit too large for this tank and then they might uh, graduate to some of the other displays. Um, but this is where I really like to concentrate um, most of my Acanthastria. So you, you know, a lot of people are kind of focused on Acans as lords, but there's actually, I don't know, like 10, 12 different species of actual Acanthastrias. So they're not all Acan Echinatus. But before we jump into the Acans, let me show you some of the non-Acans in this aquarium. And just gonna, we're just gonna kind of go around the sides. Um, this is a star mint. Uh, candy coral that I've had in my possession for about 20 years. I have them in all the tanks. We've got a nice um, kind of shaded red rhodactus there and all that brown stuff right there on the edge. That is actually a leptoceris that's starting to grow on the wall. Here we have a uh, uh, branching Favites that is actually not branching, not this one particularly. Um, I have to give this guy a really wide berth because he gets like really, really aggressive. Um, but he's starting to really encrust onto the rock. And then we've got the nice pink alveopora, which has a lot more room to open up. And moving around the sides, here's one of the original corals in this tank. The uh, Favites Pentagona classic war coral here. Red with some blue-gray streaking and some bright yellow-green mouths. Um, here in this corner are a couple small frag-grown uh, Dragon Soul or Prism Favias. We've got a red version with the green mouths here. This is a um, species of Goniastria and gets a nice yellow green growing edge right there. And there's one that's a little bit more gray brown with the green mouths and the green growing edge. So that's pretty cool. Uh, those guys were single polyps about a year ago and they're really just turning into beautiful small colonies. Um, this is what I call uh, Tonga Musa. I believe this is an undescribed species of LPS coral from Tonga and it uh, looks a lot like Homophilia uh, bowerbanki. Um, it's got large polyps, large corallites, pretty fleshy, but it just never gets um, as big uh, polyps or as big colonies as the ones we see out of Australia. And then the last non acanthastrias would be, there's a true platygyra. You can see this guy's actually grown onto the rock and he's been stung back on this edge and on this edge. On this edge, he's battling the uh, Acan Echinata. And on this edge, he's battling the uh, nice Christmas Favia. Now this is a coral that I had some challenges keeping it colored up and it turned out that uh, my water was just simply too clean. The nitrates were too low. So I started feeding more and dosing actual nitrates, trying to register um, about 5 ppm that's kind of what I aim for and it colored up really really nice got much fluffier all the red and the green came back and more pronounced through the entire colony and then one random not quite sure what kind of moon coral that is but now we can talk about the acanthastrias so this is a nice large colony of Acanthastria rotundiflora. You can see the, the flesh overall is kind of smooth in between the core lights, not that much definition. And that is kind of one of the classic looks of Acanthastria rotundiflora. This is actually a frag of rotundiflora, which has kind of a yellow mustardy green internal uh, mouth. Um, really cool little rainbow of colors. Um, jumping along, this is a coral that I've had in my possession. Uh, I got this as a frag from Live Aquaria a really long time ago. Um, this is a classic Acan Echinata, just a total beautiful rainbowy specimen with bright, bright green mouths. I need to I need to cut off a little piece of that so I can spread it around. But then jumping over to something that's slightly different. Now you can see one of the beautiful firefish. There you go, buddy. This is, um, I believe, Acanthastria subeconata or Favia formis. You can see the core lights are a lot more angular and they are um, kind of smaller. <laughs> They're smaller. So Acan Echinata over here, we got pretty round core lights. 
and um, a little bit larger. And over here is a little bit smaller, a little bit angular corallite. So it's definitely not Echinata, um, but it's a nice solid orange colony with kind of dark uh, purplish mouths. And then over here, we have the, uh, the uh, Acanthastria pachycepta. So I, I've written and done videos at length that these corals are not lobophilios. They are much hardier, much more aggressive. This one right here is getting stung on that side by the uh, Favites pentagona I was showing you. Um, this is a solid green one, orange one. This one's got orange with a little bit of a green mouth. Um, but this one's really funny because I got this about 12 years ago. This is one of my first ever eBay corals. I paid 100 bucks for a small orange scoli, and I've had this thing for going on 12 years, I think. And it's actually very, very freaking aggressive. But it grew from one single polyp coralite about that size, and uh, now it, as it's getting bigger, it's branching and um, really coming into its own. Well, lastly, got a little nurseries of some different Acan Echinatas and uh, other weird types. I'm not exactly sure what they are. These are some beautiful specimens. Um, like I said, I, I'd like to uh, start my corals auditioning them on the ground, and as they get bigger, um, I'll pop them somewhere else on the aquascape. So um, that is all the corals in this particular aquarium. It's uh, you know kind of a low energy, low demand style aquarium. And now I wanna tell you about the light that I'm using on this particular aquarium. All right, so the light that I'm wearing on here is a Maxpect Jump Blue version. This is a 65 watt light, runs around $230 to $250, depending on your market. And I just happen to have a regular version of the Maxpec Jump. So they both have, I think, about six colors of uh, six channels of color control. And there might be a few different colors writing each of those channels. But uh, what I want to show you is that it's a really nice heavy duty metal light fixture. So you're getting like a pretty premium product for $200. 230 to 250. Um, it has six clusters here of four lenses and one of these lenses under each clusters is actually RGBW and so in addition to your nutritious white and blue spectrum with the RGBW you're able to really kind of fine-tune the color that you want. Now one thing that I always prioritize in my fixtures and is their mounting option and the ability to angle the light backwards. You don't want to shine that light all over the front glass because you're going to end up uh, really having to clean the glass more often. And you want to light up the corals from the front because that's the side that you see. So um, natively in the fixture of the Maxpec Jump, um, you can actually fine tune the bracket mount itself to get about four or five degrees of angle backwards. And you can fine tune the fixture up here a little bit. Now, so you'll see it does look like it's drooping, but it's set up that way in order to shine the light backwards a little bit more. So the one thing that the Maxpec Jump does that is hard to really appreciate on paper is that it intelligently redistributes the power uh, from the channels that you deselect to the channels that you do select. Um, I know other lights have tried to do this, but in the Maxpec Jump, they've really taken to the next level. That's because they have this large heat sink fixture. They're able to cool um, all the LEDs no matter what channel you set them at. Right now, we're running the kind of the built-in 16,000 Kelvin program, but you'll notice I'll click the 12,000 Kelvin program, the light will switch color a little bit, but the intensity doesn't change hardly at all. So now I'm gonna change from 12,000 Kelvin to 20,000 Kelvin. So the intensity changed a little bit, but mostly that was the color. And we can actually verify this with a kilowatt. You guys know me and my kilowatt. Sure. All right, so here we've got the, the kilowatt set up. I'm on the 20,000 Kelvin program. I'm gonna switch to the 16,000 Kelvin program. The color changed and it went up like one watt. I'll change it to the 12,000 Kelvin program. It went up, the color changed, and the, the power consumption pretty much stayed the same. So like I said, we've seen companies uh, implement this in various ways, but it's actually quite surprising how much you can change the color while remaining at overall 100% uh, intensity with this light fixture. All right, so the other really neat feature about the, the Maxpec Jump 
ecosystem is how you're not only able to share a, a uh, setting, like you know, a single color profile, but also an entire schedule just with a QR code, right? So right now we're at 12,000 12, Kelvin. Um, I'm gonna put it into my auto mode and you can see this is my program right here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all the time points confirm um, setting management so you hit import and it gives you an option to scan a QR code so I'm gonna scan the QR code and I'm gonna scan Evan's phone and I had previously previously set up um, save this profile and send it to him and now I can save it and bada boom we are already running that program without doing anything else see all those time points right there see all those time points right there I was able to just beam over the entire setting, schedule, programming with just a few clicks. All right, so the last thing I wanna show you is I know we take a lot of pride and put a lot of effort into trying to show you the tanks in the most natural way possible, but just to you know illustrate this tank, which is very fluorescent and it runs pretty blue, um, I'm actually gonna apply a yellow-orange filter to my phone along with this clip to show you how awesome these corals look um, in, in a way that you might be more familiar with. So this is the 12,000 Kelvin and spectrum this is you know a little bit brighter white a little bit more daylight all right so now I'm gonna switch it over to the 16,000 Kelvin spectrum and you can see how it looks with you know the the full-on camera and then this is what it looks like with a colored filter um, on my phone And lastly, I'm gonna turn it to the uh, fully blue color setting. This is 20,000 Kelvin, so we have blue, royal blue, uh, cyan, and all of the colorific channels going all at once. And now here it is with uh, probably orange filter on my iPhone, so you can just see how colorific it is um, you know, in real life. So hope you guys enjoyed this kind of mishmash like tank show off and sponsored video all in one. I wanna thank you guys for joining me on this video, showing off my actual ACAN garden. I also wanna thank Maxspect for sponsoring this video to spotlight the Maxspect Jump LED blue fixture. So we use a, a handful of different uh, jump products here from Maxspect. And uh, in a time where a lot of products seem like they're getting into almost like luxury price territory, it's very refreshing to have a product line from a known brand um, that delivers a lot of performance at a value that a lot of people can stomach. So if you're looking for a light for you know a two to four foot tank and you want one or two lights only, I think the Maxpec Jump is probably one of the great lights for um, you know medium demand corals like this Acan Garden full of LPS. So thanks again for joining me in this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share with someone that you know that might be into actual Acans or looking for a budget light for their reef tanks. Um, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye guys.